welcome. I'm Cindy Jarvis with Engel and Volker's Whitefish um, Western Frontier Team, and with me is Paul Flanagan. Um, he is the owner and um, maker, I guess, creator of Stumptown Axes. Yeah. And so, Paul, tell me, first of all, how did you get into making axes? It sounds so interesting. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Honestly, it was uh, kind of a convoluted uh, story or a search for kind of creating something. Uh, I, you know, kind of one of the catchphrases I use is it started with a sewing machine, which yeah. is kind of uh, a, a, a weird way about it. But I, I, I've owned a business in the past. I had a bicycle shop for 11 years. And awesome. um, so I liked working for myself or having some, having customers and having an interaction and trying to fulfill uh, a need there and I wanted to do something again um, I wanted to make something so I created a uh, or I bought a sewing machine and I was <laughs> like hey I'm gonna make a make a pair of shorts you know like something I would right. use in, in, in a way and I got it I just wasn't super inspired by it and in the meantime like I just had randomly come across uh, you know pictures of a, of a vintage axe and I was like oh my goodness this is like I don't know it just <laughs> resonated with me and I was you know I've always liked tools I've worked with uh -huh. my hands most of my life and um, slowly I, I was like you know you know the what they're you know I, I didn't want to pay for that at the time you know I was like well Maybe I can make one, and I don't know why I thought I could. I, you know, I didn't. You know, I didn't originally work with uh, wood, or I didn't have a background in it. But I, uh, you know, I went on Craigslist. I bought an old axe head and went down to a lumber yard and uh, bought a piece of hickory, and you know, bought a really some really cheap tools, which you know weren't much help, but they were a start. And, you know, there was plenty of videos online that kind of showed me uh, kind of where to start. Um, having worked with hand tools quite a bit, I sort of like understood concepts of grip and stuff and just slowly made my first handle and awesome. it wasn't horrible. So I was kind of <laughs> like, thought, oh, I was really, so yeah, I was like, you know, I was like, this looks like the real thing. This looks, uh -huh. it, it turned out like I wanted it turned out, which right. was exciting. And I kind of got hooked. Eventually, you know, I started selling them. You know, I felt that they were, I, I got up to a point where the production was a high enough quality that it commanded a price. Awesome. So you sell mainly on the Instagram right now. What are, you know, what are you looking to do um, to continue that growth or interest? Yeah, so with the move to Whitefish, um, I started Stumptown uh, Axis, and, uh -huh. and it was a, just a happy chance that we moved to Whitefish and then I learned that the original name was Stumptown and I was like well I gotta call yeah, it. This is yeah this is like it made a lot of sense the, lo the logging history and it just mm -hmm. it just felt right and um, so moving here you know I started some brand concepts we have uh, we've established uh, some of the branding with a logo um, my hopes is to continue to grow that as both a brand with merchandise mm -hmm. and um, Items, you know, people if they don't want an axe necessarily, but want to support the brand, they're gonna have t-shirts, hats, koozies, uh, you know, standard kind of marketing stuff. But I'd also eventually like to branch out into some local stores here. Um, so people can, you know, as tourists come through, that you, you can hit different customers uh, besides just exclusively um, on Instagram. Wow, that's awesome. You want to show us a couple and tell me a little bit about, how, yeah. you know, process and uh, just um, what you would use those for, that kind of thing? Yeah, so these are all um, all eventually handmade. Uh, mm -hmm. I focus mainly on uh, vintage uh, heads. So that's going to be anything from, you know, roughly the early 1800s wow. to uh, around the 1960s, 1970s uh -huh. is about when the high quality steel stopped you know mm -hmm. the logging industry by then the chainsaws were were nice and light right. and had converted over for expediency and were no longer needing uh, the, the tools mm -hmm. uh, I I, uh, I make these handles out of hickory uh, mm -hmm. primarily awesome. is the only mm -hmm. thing I work with um, we get like what's called an eight quarter where it's about a two inch board and I draw uh, the handle out, I do have a couple different patterns I use, uh, or I use older axes. The, uh, this is called a double bit, so it's a double sided, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes called a backstabber because you had to be careful <laughs> oh. who, is, who is standing behind you when you're swinging it. 
Um, this is a, a True Temper Kelly Perfect. So this is actually a, 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 a very nice uh, head. So the Kelly Perfects were the their premium uh, product. And this is True Temper, the, the, the same company, technically that's still around today, but it's not the same quality as, okay. they, it's been sold several times. Um, you know, through the 1930s to the 1960s, True Temper was really uh, a big manufacturer of hand tools uh -huh. um, uh, and cutting tools like this. The uh, uh, the wedges, you know, so they're driven in. Uh, this this one happens to be a, a rosewood. Uh, so heads are s smaller on the bottom and the opening in the eye, okay. and wider at the top. Okay. And essentially that's so you can drive a wedge and splay open the top. Oh, okay. And that's what actually holds it on there. Oh, um, that's important. Yeah, <laughs> you, don't, you don't want these flying off. Yeah. Um, and so this is going to be, uh, this is going to New York. Oh, that's uh, so awesome. this is, uh, this is actually somebody I do know. Um, we'll get this piece and this is, uh, this is going to be a nice piece for him. He's going to yeah. be, he's going to utilize this. Uh, some of what I make, you know, people just mount on the wall. They right. want an old antique that's been refinished. Uh, I wish I had an example to show you like w how this started. You know, this would have been completely rusty. You can right. see some of the pits that are still there and, and that kind of thing. Uh, but so it goes through a process of refinishing. Uh -huh. We re-edge it uh, to make it new again, essentially. Awesome. Uh, so if it's going to be a display piece or if it's going to be a, a piece that's utilized. Awesome. So what else do we have here? Just a yeah, this is tradition? Yeah, well, this is a camp axe. Uh, okay. So it's a smaller, a lot of people call this a three-quarter uh, size. Again, it's hickory. And uh, again, awesome. I use the rosewood. Okay. Um, this is a probably from the 1970s uh, piece. This is a little bit newer. Um, again, it would have been, what do they call, mushroomed in the back. So they would have dented and stuff. So I, I take right. a belt uh, sander. And, you know, I like to leave uh, parts of it with the original kind right. of finish. But then also, you know, kind of give somebody a, a nice feel of something new or, right. or, or reconditioned. Right. Right. Uh, this is going to have Those duty. Those are beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so now tell us, how can they find you? How can they reach you? Can yeah. You give them information so that if they're interested to find out more about your products and how to receive them and mm -hmm. order them, that kind of thing. Primarily, uh, the best place to both see my product and to order is going to be um, on Instagram. And that's at, at Stumptown Axes. Um, I can be reached at Paul at uh, stumptownaxes.com. Okay, okay. uh, we do have a website um, at uh, www.stumptownaxes.com, but primarily that just redirects you at this point to Instagram. Um, just so you can see a gallery and reach out and you can see who's interacting and you'll see more pieces. Right. Um, this is a great place to curate a lot of different work um, that I've done. Uh, hashtag Stumptown Axes is another one. Um, I think I'm the only person that's, that's, that's used that, so it's easy to, <laughs> to find what I've done there uh, as well. But those would be the primary places and, and directly reach out to me yeah. to talk about a proje project and how to get that going and stuff. There's also a video I put on there to kind of explain the the buying process from me and how because oh, it can be a little intimidating like oh i don't know what i need <laughs> yeah. or i don't know anything well, about axes yeah. that's that's fine you don't need to know it doesn't it's not important i'm the one that needs to know so right. that's perfect that's perfect and then hopefully in the future maybe at some of our local markets and such yeah. you're looking to to be there right yep yep we should uh, hoping to, to branch out that's awesome so well thank you for joining us um Thanks for joining Paul and myself, uh, Cindy Jarvis with Western Frontier, um, Engel and Volkers. Thanks. Bye.